This is a short video about what it means to be an epsilon net for a metric space XD. So let's say you've got a metric space and let's say you've got some number epsilon, some positive number. So we're going to say a finite subset F of your metric space is called an epsilon net for X if for each element of your metric space, for each X and X, there exists a point P from your F such that the distance between X and P is smaller than epsilon. So let's try to look at a specific example. So let's say x is the interval from 0 to 1 on the real line with the usual metric, or just the absolute value of the difference between two numbers. And let's say epsilon is a half. Then what I want to show you is that the set f, which is 1 third, 2 thirds, so two points out of my set 0, 0 to 1, out of that interval, those two points could be called a 1 half net for x. So we have this concept, you know, there's a set at, there's a set F here for, for each epsilon that you pick. I hope that that makes sense. So let's look at why this is the case. Y is one third comma two thirds, a one half net for X. And so how come? So let's let, let's pick a point X and zero one. So we need to show, maybe what do we need to show from the definition here for each X in your set? So for each X and zero one, there exists a point in your supposed epsilon net such that the distance between x and p is at most epsilon. So in our case here, if x is in 0, 1, then it makes sense to say that, well, either x is less than or equal to a half or x is larger than a half. And this one half here that I'm talking about, don't that's not connected necessarily to the fact that I'm looking at a one half net here. I just decided to split the interval from 0 to 1 into two pieces. And so the point then is that if x is to the left of a half, is what I'm trying to say to you here, well then x is pretty close to one third. And what do I mean by pretty close to one third? The distance between x and one third is less than epsilon, it's less than a half. On the other hand, the other possibility for an x in here would be that it's instead of this, it's to the right of a half. So that's number two down here. So, or if x is to the right of a half, well, here's an x that's to the right of a half. And what do you notice? Well, then the distance from x to two thirds now is less than epsilon. So the point is that in zero one, those two blue points, one third and two thirds, those are two points where any point in zero one, its distance from one of those two points is guaranteed to be less than a half. So that's why those two blue points form a one half net for zero one. Uh, now, what do we want to do? We want to take that definition and do something with it. So we'll say that a metric space is totally bounded if for each epsilon larger than zero, there is an epsilon net for the space. So in my example above, I started with a half. I'm saying that I need to be able to construct an F for any epsilon. So I constructed an F one third, two thirds for the epsilon equals one half. I'm saying that to be totally bounded, you need to be able to do such a thing for any epsilon. So let me give you an example here. Uh, again, just this part of the real line from zero to one with the usual metrics is totally bounded. So how come? So we're gonna let epsilon just be some arbitrary positive number. What do we need to do? Well, what we're gonna do is we are going to try to construct a set F, a finite subset F, so that for any point in zero one, you should be able to find a point P in your finite subset F so that the distance between X and P is at most epsilon. So what we'll do is if I've got this positive number epsilon, I'm gonna pick the first or the smallest natural number N so that N times epsilon puts me to the right of one. So then what I'll do is I'll just look at the multiples of epsilon up to just before that, in, just before that natural number N. And so F will be the set epsilon two epsilon, blah, 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 up to n minus one epsilon. So there's finitely many points there. And also notice that each one of those points in F is a member of the interval zero one. And I've tried to draw you a picture below. Also what I mean too, notice that the last blue point on the right is n minus one epsilon. You know, the next multiple is n epsilon. And I'm saying that that takes you to the right of one. So that's what I'm trying to say here. So now what I'm trying to emphasize though, all I'm trying to say is that if I was to randomly pick any point X that is in this interval now from zero to one, uh, what do I know? I know that the dis can you find a blue point so that the distance between X and that blue point is at most epsilon? Well, the way that I've constructed each of these things, the distance from one blue point to the next is less than epsilon. So therefore, no matter where you pick an X, this distance here is gonna be less than epsilon. Or if you pick this X right here, again, I've constructed this, this 
set of blue points in a way so that you can always find a blue point next to any red point that you pick so that that distance is less than epsilon. Again, because the width of one blue point to another is exactly epsilon. And so what I'm gonna say then is for, if I delete this stuff here, I'm going to say F, this set here, is such that for any x that you picked, like I was doing, you can find an integer k that's smaller than n minus one. So what I mean is a natural number smaller than n minus one. In other words, you could find one of these points in here, say it's two epsilon, or maybe it's this one, such that though, again, the distance between x and that value k times epsilon is less than epsilon itself. And that's what I was trying to emphasize again to you here. If I'm at this point right here, then maybe I'll say that this is my k epsilon because I'm guaranteed that the distance from this to this right here, that segment there, is smaller than epsilon. And so uh, in that way, we've constructed this finite blue set f for any epsilon now. And so f is an epsilon net for x. And so since that worked for any epsilon, that shows that x is totally bounded. Now, we've ran into this adjective bounded before in topology. And so totally bounded is a little bit more of a, it's like a stronger property. And so totally bounded actually implies bounded. Any totally bounded metric space is also bounded in like the more usual sense that you could, you know, draw like a, um, maybe you could draw like the, the uh, like an epsilon ball around, around your, uh, around your whole set. But on the other hand, bounded does not imply totally bounded. And what I've tried to do is draw you a picture. It just kind of ca captures these ideas here. I'm saying maybe metric spaces that are totally bounded, if you're inside of this circle, then you're inside the bounded metric spaces circle too. That's what this is saying. On the other hand though, what the next part is saying is that there exists some, total, some uh, bounded metric spaces like this one out here that's not a totally bounded space. And so in other words, it's harder to be a totally bounded metric space. There's more criteria.